Hi there, it's Sandy Almock, and today I am going to be creating bubbles using inks, pencils, and a little bit of pen. But they're really easy to do. This stamp set from Lawn Fawn was what got me excited about doing this. It's got a bunch of bubbly images in it, and it does have some elements that are intended to be for the interactive cards. This one is not interactive. It is actually one flat layer, believe it or not. And there is a stencil set, but I'm going to kind of make my own stencil. I'm using some masking paper from Judykins and punching out a bunch of circles. You could also use dies. And I do have some alternate materials down in the description, some other die sets that you could try, or the stencil set that I forgot to buy when I bought the stamp set itself. That's why I'm making my own stencils. I'm using the positive part of each circle to create a layout. I just wanted to figure out where I wanted my bubbles to be, where I wanted my sentiment, because I'm gonna have the second part of the sentiment on the inside. So leaving just part of it on the front. And I'm trying to make a flow around the card. So it kind of goes from the bottom and, and sort of has everything joined. There are some little foam pads I'm using because I can also use the foam applicator to create some bubbles. So I wanted that for some smaller ones. And I'm just arranging and rearranging, figuring out where I want all the little critters to be. You could do this with other stamp sets, by the way. You could put other animals in bubbles, but these guys are actually blowing bubbles. So it's kind of perfect for this. Now, when I started getting ready to do the stamping, I realized I needed to remember where I had placed all these things because I'm taking all of the masks off. So I took a picture of it so I could remember what my layout would be when I get to that point because for right now, I need to remove all those masks so I can stamp the little critters into the picture. So getting them all stamped with some Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink. Whatever ink you use, you need to be able to ink over top of it without mushing it. And that's why I use the Lawn Fawn ink. You could use a dye ink maybe if you let it dry enough or if you emboss it or something. But part of the joy of this is going to be that the white from the bubbles is going to cover and lighten some of these mice. That's going to make them look like they're inside the bubble. So I do have my picture pulled up there, but I realized I should probably put some color into the mice first. So I just used a, a number three gray and a number one gray to do some really, really simple coloring on the animals. You could probably also do this in colored pencil or some other medium, but again, whatever it is, you need to be able to ink over top of it. So here I'm using my nearly dead Lawn Fawn, Lawn Fawn Yeti, I can't even say that, Lawn Fawn Yeti ink pad. It is really, really dry, and trying to, to put the ink on the paper was not working, so I just went straight from the ink pad to the bubble, to the paper itself, filling in some white into that area. And then I took a little bit of a blue. Now, this is Fiesta Blue from Catherine Pooler, maybe a little dark. So then I would ink over top of it a little bit in the, uh, the white again to kind of lighten it. You can adjust it back and forth. You can move your mask and then put it back in place. Really is gonna depend on what color paper you use. If you decide to do this on pink paper, you're gonna wanna use a pink with the white in order to make your bubbles. Because whatever the paper color is, you need to make it look like these bubbles are transparent. And that's what's going to help you with that. You'll get a little bit of that dimension with just adding a soft bit of color. Now I'm gonna be doing some other things to strengthen the white in here. If you have a much juicier ink pad, which most humans would have, I need to get a new one or get a re-inker because yeah, this is kind of a problem that it's so light. However, it gave me some other options that you'll see when I start adding more whiteness to it. So that was still, it still worked out in the long run. But you can see how it's starting to lighten the little critters. They're looking like they're inside, like the bubbles around three-dimensionally and in front of them. And adding that little bit of a blue is also helpful 
to, to make those look kind of roundish. The cool thing about bubbles is when they're floating around like this, it really isn't going to matter if there's lighting from one side or if anything is done perfectly or not. Just start throwing in the white there. It's going to just make it look like bubbles regardless. Now I did some other stamping and tried with my ink pad, but there was so little ink in there. I barely got a haze of the white bubbles because I stamped some more bubbles over top of all of this work that I had already done. You cannot even see it. This card was the hardest to film. I even had to do some color adjustments to get this part to not blow out. For some reason, it was just really, really light. So I darkened it so that you could at least see what I was doing, which is replacing my masks so that I can then use a white pencil, a white Prismacolor pencil to go around the edges and outline them. You don't have to outline them 100% because the outlines can come and go, but it's gonna to help to define the edges of each one of them. If your ink pad is much juicier than mine, you may not need to do much of this. So I will let you be the judge of that when you figure out how, how juicy your white ink pad is. I do find or have found until now that the Lawn Fawn Yeti ink pad is my favorite of all of the white ink pads that I've tried. However, clearly as it starts to run out of ink, it's not as helpful. So now that I've outlined all of the main bubbles, I'm going into some of the other ones. I can see them from an angle where I'm working and start to either fill in or outline some of the smaller bubbles that I've put in here. And you can add them in even if you haven't stamped them by hand. You could just draw in circles. Make sure it doesn't look like measles, <laughs> like chicken pox. So you want to make them look like bubbles instead of just spots. So putting a little white highlight on it is often helpful. So here I'm adding in some highlights just using my white pencil to add some softly faded highlights and then using a white pen, since the white pen is even more opaque than my white pencil, I can add really strong white highlights. And the two different types of highlighting on these bubbles really starts to make them look dimensional. You can make sure that your pencil goes over top of some of the critters as well. So you can even block off some of the area where the critter is itself. So here I'm just going to color right over top of that one little mouse and it really does make him look like he's inside the bubble. So just proceed around your entire design and do this and it's just fun and relaxing. And for me, as I have been kind of working through my hand injury, which if you have been following along, yes, I have a repetitive stress injury. I was looking for projects that I can do that don't hurt my hand very much. And there was not a lot of actually holding pencils and pens and coloring in this. So I was able to do this quite well. If you have arthritis, some of the projects that I'm doing nowadays might be more doable for you than what I often have posted because usually my hands are a little stronger than this. But here's how it came out. I put the second part of the sentiment on the inside with some more bubbles. And I love that I've got a really nice flow for this all the way you know, from the bottom up to the top of the card, the way bubbles kind of cluster when you blow them. And that's about it for today's video. So I hope you will go and make something in a bubble, whether it's one of these mice or some other stamp that you have. And I will see you again in another video very, very soon. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.